To go? Are we ready? Go. Okay, good morning. We're ready to go. And I'd like to welcome you all to the Connecting, Making Connecting Women's to Women's program. And uh, we'll start out this morning with our Pledge of Allegiance. If you could join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we will have our, our dual member, Christine. She is a veteran, and she's a member of our auxiliary. And she will read the proclamation that the she will read the proclamation that the uh, mayor has put out for today, and I'll just let Chris read that. Office of the Mayor, City of Sheboygan, proclamation. Whereas women have served honorably and courageously in all of America's wars and conflicts since the American Revolution, and whereas the history of women in the military, history of love for country, service, commitment, dedication, and courage, and it includes sacrifices that have largely, largely gone unrecognized. And whereas the population of women's veterans is increasing exponentially from 1.1 million in 1980 to a projected 2 million by 2020, comprising more than 10% of the veteran population. And whereas the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 83, Women to Women Connection, is hosting a seminar on Saturday, March 10th, 2012, at the American Legion VFW Hall at 552 South Evans Street in Sheboygan. And whereas the purpose of this event is to inform the public and veterans of the benefits and services to which they are entitled through government programs. Now, therefore, I, Terry Van Akron, by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of the city of Sheboygan, to hereby proclaim March 10th, 2012, as Women's Veterans Day in Sheboygan and urge all citizens to join me in recognizing and showing our appreciation for their part in advancing the promise of freedom. Thank you, Chris. Um, I think for those of you that I've talked to on the phone and that you don't haven't met me, you don't know who I am, I am Danny Wilson, and I've talked to a number of you on the phone. And uh, I am the president of, of the Legion Auxiliary here at um, Post, uh, Prescott Bayens Post 83 here. And uh, our team would like to welcome you all here today. They have done a fabulous job in getting things together and putting this together because we think it's so important to get the word out about women veterans and your benefits and what we can do to help you. Okay. Um, Thank you, you're welcome. Okay, and they were just that there is facilities are down the hall here to the right, uh, the men's and the ladies' uh, restrooms. We have a basket auction over here. It's some lovely things that uh, Joanne has put together. Thank you, Joanne. And you're welcome to uh, bid on those. And we will be drawing for that approximately 30 minutes after the program ends because we don't have a definite time that the program's going to end. So we say 30 minutes after. And hopefully Judge Angela will be here. Um, she said that she'd come and give us a quick update on the Veterans Court, which is going to be in Sheboygan. It's going to begin in April. And it's a wonderful new program to help veterans, uh, male and female both, and uh, we'll let her tell you about it. Um, right after this team is done. And uh, Steve from WSCS 990 is here videotaping, and so this program will be on cable. It will be on cable here in, in Sheboygan's. Um, 
And at this time then, I would like to turn the program over to Kathy Wolmer, who is our Homeless Women Veteran Chairman for the Department of Wisconsin, American Legion Auxiliary. And uh, I'm sure she's got a lot of wonderful things to tell you about, and uh, hopefully we'll have great information that we will be able to take away and work with. Um, thank you, Danny, and thank you, Unit 83 from uh, Sheboygan, for hosting this event. Um, thank you all for coming. I hope that you learned something today that will be a, a benefit to veterans. Before I get started, I would like to acknowledge all veterans that are here today in our audience. Would you please stand? All veterans. Fantastic. Thank you for your service and thank you for coming. Homeless Women Veterans is a program of the Wisconsin American Legion Auxiliary Veterans Affairs and Rehabilitation Committee. Chairman, this year, I also should say to you that this is, the, is a new program that the department has added. Um, so you probably are not familiar with it. Uh, as a chairman, I had four goals that I set for this program this year. Uh, the first one was to continue our grant program, which offers assistance to homeless or at risk of being homeless women veterans. Uh, to date, donations have been received at department over $65,000. And that has all come from units throughout Wisconsin. Give yourself a hand. That is phenomenal. <laughs> Department has expensed over 40000 This fund has helped over 30 women veterans who had no place to live were at, or were at risk of losing their current housing. Two of them were being evicted within the next few days. Both had children. One was living in her car. Mostly, we have assisted in paying security deposits and first month's rent as these ladies transition from the VA assistant programs in uh, Milwaukee, Madison, the James Lovell um, Women's Health Clinic in Chicago, Appleton, uh, the um, car repairs, uh, storage units while the ladies are in uh, the VA hospitals and they um, they have to have a place to put their furniture, so we'll, we have paid storage units. Um, we also, department also purchased a, a washer and dryer for the Boudica House in Milwaukee, which is a uh, transitional housing only for women only. And uh, I think currently they said they have eight women living in this house, and they have room for 14, so uh, of benefit. Uh, one of the things Wisconsin lacks right now is housing for women veterans. There is uh, transitional housing uh, for um, male veterans and because of security purposes and they haven't ironed out the problems yet but they better, louder, sorry, and uh, they, uh, women veterans, because of security, they cannot cohabitate women and male veterans within the same facility unless they have 24-hour security and a way to lock separation. So they are working on that, but um, that's, at least I can say they're working on it. We're not, they're not forgetting the issue. Uh, the second goal I had was to ask auxiliary members uh, to volunteer for volunteers from my auxiliary members uh, from each county, uh, district, unit that are going to be the connection to women veterans in communities where personal contact is needed to complete the grant assistance. Uh, one of the rules of the grant program is that auxiliary will not give money directly to a veteran. At times, it becomes necessary for someone to go shopping for the veteran, uh, help with transportation, assist the veteran in finding the VA benefits and representatives. Apple volu Appleton volunteers are currently working at the, with a woman who had just moved from 
living in her car to her own apartment and they are helping her uh, move her furniture and things into her place. Stevens Point volunteers are currently working with a veteran with two children who was in domestic abuse crisis situation. They have contacted her, helped her move into her separate housing and continue to offer support as needed. Goal number three is why we're here today, to develop a program making connections women to women, which will assist Wisconsin American Legion Auxiliary members in becoming a resource of information for veterans in their communities with special emphasis on the needs of women veterans and their children. And as you, as we continue through this program, um, the American Legion Auxiliary is highlighting women veterans this year. But everything that we say and talk about applies to all veterans. Women are not exclusive and do not have special privileges as far as the VA. So when I say women veterans, it it applies to all veterans, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, goal number four was to develop a resource directory of VA benefits and uh, to be shared with anyone that wants to uh, have it. I think we passed that out. It's on the department's website if you need to uh, uh, print more. This resource directory is not designed to show you how to determine eligibility process claims or handle complaints, but to empower you with the knowledge to assist veterans. Yes, I, 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 I guess I do. Now can you hear me? <laughs> um, starting in June, the following agencies held weekly roundtable discussions focusing on women veterans. The Madison Vet Center, Homeless Veteran Coordinator, Madison VA Hospital, Women Health Clinic in Madison VA Medical Center, Women Veteran Coordinator, Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs, Na Wisconsin National Guard Support Services, American Red Cross, and American Legion Auxiliary. This focus group agreed on three main issues, helping women veterans know the benefits they have earned, helping them connect to the VA representatives and the resources available, and getting the veteran benefit information to women veterans in small communities and rural areas of Wisconsin. The following facts have kept us focused and motivated to do something for women veterans. Women veterans do not think of themselves as veterans or even understand who a veteran is. Women, one of the first things they, uh, women veterans will say to us is, well, I did, we didn't go overseas or I wasn't in combat. And they dismiss the fact that they are a veteran. Women veterans are trained to take care of themselves. Asking for help is a sign of weakness. Women veterans do not apply for veteran benefits they have earned as often as male counterparts do. Many are not aware of, the, of they are eligible for veteran benefits. I, I, I think I just said this, but the reason is they didn't get shot at. And they, will, they, they have said that to us several times in some of these uh, meetings we've had. Um, many women veterans have experienced military sexual trauma. One in five homeless women veterans report sexual trauma compared to one in 100 in male veterans. Once discharged, women veterans do not trust Department of Veterans Affairs administrators or military staff. The majority of homeless or at risk of being homeless women veterans have minor children's, children, therefore, they will not ask for help from the VA because of an unfounded fear that if they ask for help, they will lose their custody of their children. These veterans are smart, highly trained, highly skilled women with a lot of inv invisible scars. All they need is a little help and encouragement. Veterans need to hear about VA benefits and resources with easy access and availability in the community. 
Therefore, this is where you guys, you gals come in. <laughs> Therefore, it made perfect sense to ask the 26,000 members of the American Legion Auxiliary to continue to do what they do best, service not self for veterans, outreach in small communities and rural areas of Wisconsin by making connection to the 28,000 women veterans in Wisconsin. And then now I'd like to introduce Randy Purcell, is that? Or not Rodney, I'm sorry, Rodney Purcell. And he will walk us through a PowerPoint that this original focus group put together um, describing veteran benefits. And I will just turn it over to him. So. Uh, well, first I would like you know, thank, uh, thank everyone here for giving me this opportunity you know, to kind of, you know, uh, give a presentation and, and uh, information regarding, you know, the veteran services. You know, and also, too, I guess, first of all, second of all, is, is to thank all the veterans here for everything that you sacrificed. Because if it wasn't for these sacrifices, we wouldn't be free. You know, um, today I'm going to give a brief, in, you know, by the time we, we end this presentation, today, everybody here is going to be skilled in land navigation, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's something as we talk about these, you know, benefits, and, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of knowledge of the VA and kind of looking at the VA and the benefits and that, you know, it is a, it's a, it a, a country in itself, and if you don't know how to navigate through it, and how to get direction, you know, it's, it's tough. It's like going into unknown territory and you, you can end up walking around in circles and talking to people who point you in this direction and that direction and by the time it's all over, you know, a, a person is like, I've been on, the, you know, pounding the ground for so long, it's, you know, I, I give up, you know, and, it, and it's especially difficult for veterans who are already experiencing wounds from the military and from war, emotional, spiritual, physical, to have to hump this trail when you're in pain. You know, and, and a lot of times, you know, you, know, you know, to walk the trail alone. So it makes it even a little more difficult. So my objective today is to give a brief overview of the different, you know, services that are available, but then also, too, you know, who to contact to get more information, to apply for benefits, and you have, if you have questions about, you know, different types of benefits, because, uh, at the vet center, you know, our, our main objective is providing a variety of different support and counseling services, but we know that every veteran that comes through the door has more than one need. You know, so my, the best way that I can serve the veteran is to know a little bit about everything. You know, and I might not know how to fill out the paperwork or exactly what form, but I do know the person that will help you through the entire, you know, process. You know, and if that veteran needs assistance, you know, I will travel to that veteran's house no matter where it is to pick that veteran, you know, and, and help them through the process because it is. And so by the time we finish today, everybody will in some ways be skilled in, in VA land navigation. So, uh, and that's the thing too, you know, especially, you know, with veterans of past and present, you know, they come back, you know, and might not know what everything is, you know, what benefits they are entitled to or where to go. And this is where everybody can benefit too, is because with this knowledge, you might be at your church, you might be at the park, at the grocery store, you know, and talking to somebody. It's like, oh, well, yeah, I serve, but I don't know where to go. This here too will be able to help tell that veteran, talk to Charlene at the County Veterans Service Office, or, you know, is, you know, I want to go to school out at Lakeland College. What do I do? Talk to the VA uh, financial advisor out there. And so I kind of talked a little bit about everything, you know, uh, key organizations, you know, what veterans need to access this service. There's both federal, state, and county uh, veteran services and programs. They're all similar, but in different, you know, have differences about the services that they provide. Uh, the variety of different service organizations for veterans to obtain information, you know, file a service-connected disability claim. But also, too, sometimes within the VA, the VA can't do it all. So that's where it's important to know of community organizations, you know, as to provide, you know, food, clothing, child care, support, 
there's a program here in Sheboygan that, uh, that there's a, a yoga organization where she provides uh, free yoga for all veterans who are experiencing injuries, you know, from the military. And so for them who want something other than maybe, you know, pills and operations through the VA, I could say, you know, here's a person to contact that who does yoga. You know, you might want to check, you know, check her out and see how she might be helpful. And that might just be what the veteran needs. You know, and, and that's the thing, you know, too, like somebody had mentioned, you know, it said, as soon as you raise your hand and you're sworn in, you're a veteran. You know, you've made the pledge to serve. You know, this is what I have to offer and will sacrifice, which is all of me. You know, and until the day, you know, that you get your walking papers, you know, you're a veteran. From then and then until the man calls your number, you're a veteran. You know, so everything that you've earned, you know, we will be talking about today. The one thing, too, you know, it meant confidentiality is that, you know, all the services that we provide, you know, is all confidentiality confidential. So when a veteran comes in, you know, and talks about, you know, their needs, their services, whatever experiences they may have had, you know, everything is kept confidential, you know. Um, VA medical centers, you know, they offer a huge wide amount of services. In the back of these federal benefit books, you know, in addition to talking about federal benefits, they have a directory in here of every VA medical center, VA hospital, VA clinic, you know, vet center, regional office, because some people like to take trips or some people might like to go where it's warm in the winter time here in Wisconsin. Let's say you move to, you know, Florida or you go to Texas and all of a sudden you might run out of your medication or you might have a medical need. Well, where do I find out, you know, where the closest VA clinic or medical center is? You know, it's right here. You know. Housing programs, you know, grants, uh, like I said, you know, the VA offers home loans, they have uh, home improvement loans, a person's health changes over time and they might need modifications to their home because of wheelchair access or to address their needs. The VA has programs, you know, grants that a, a, con a construction crew will come in and modify that home for the veteran. You know, uh, tuition assistance, here again too. Uh, the federal uh, GI Bill, there's a variety of different programs and they offer uh, uh, all education for like let's say the UW system here in Wisconsin. You know, and where would you find out about what am I eligible for and what's the difference between the federal and the state? Contact Charlene Cobb at the County Veterans Service Office because with the, uh, the federal uh, GI Bill, here again, it varies, but it's about 10 years that a veteran can, can use these services, where the Wisconsin uh, GI Bill is lifetime. You know, that's something I learned out the other day, you know, and where the federal, they pay for basically everything that there is, books, schools, tuition, everything. It differs with the state where they have, a, I think it's called a, re a reimbursement. So anybody here that, you know, would say, I think I'm going to go back to school. You can talk to Charlene and say, I would like to go to technical school. I would like to go to UW Sheboygan, you know. I want to go to UW Eau Claire. You know, the Wisconsin GI Bill is lifetime, so there's never an end. Um, also, too, is that there's a variety of different, you know, services, you know, for burials. Here again, too. You know, the federal and the state differ, but then also, too, I've learned that the county has different services, too, for as far as assistance. So the where, you know, so for all these benefits here, a person can contact their county veteran service office for both state and federal benefits to find out who offers what and can I get both federal and state or is it one or the other? And like I said, you know, key organizations, the you know, U.S. Department of Federal, you know, benefits, that's federal. They have their own kind of benefits, rules, and regulations as far as uh, applying for a service-connected disability, their home loan, their tuition programs, you know, land, buying land, uh, buying homes. Um, the Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs, you know, each of the counties here, you know, you know they work with Madison you know, and here the state, and that's where sometimes too, you know, if a person moves to another state, you know, each state regulates its own you know, state benefits. So let's say that Karen all of a sudden wants to move to Alaska, you know, 
and all of a sudden she gets there and well first you have to find out you know what the what the residency uh, residence eligibility is here it's in wisconsin i believe it's a year you know but in alaska it might be five days you know and benefits that the, the wisconsin state offers they alaska might offer more or less or a variety of different uh, different avenues so each state has a variety of different rules, benefits when it comes to their own state benefits, but when it comes to federal, they're all the same no matter where you go. Uh, county Veterans Service Officers, you know, too, here again, too, the county has benefits that the state and the federal might have, you know, and to find out what I'm, what I'm eligible for as far as, you know, living in Sheboygan County, you know, Charlene would be the person to talk to. But here, that the, again, too, you might move to Manitowoc or you might move up to Rock County. Here again, all of a sudden, what might be eligible and the benefits that you have in Sheboygan County differ up in Rock. You know, so everybody, when it comes to state and county benefits, everybody is different. And, you know, they're similar, but they might have more or they might have less of the benefits offered. And with the VA medical centers, you know, throughout the, you know, the United States, here again, too, yeah, you know, because they're federal benefits, you know, they all run the same. So whether you're in Wisconsin, in Alaska, in Michigan, you know, and as long as you got your enrollment card, you know, you can use any of these facilities, you know, that you might need. But one thing, too, about VA medical centers is that let's say that you're someplace where there is a uh, the VA hospital or medical center is more than 50 miles away and you have a medical emergency, you can use any of the civilian hospitals or clinics to get that taken care of. And once you're stabilized, then you then they would transport you to the nearest VA clinic. And then once you're there, you got to let them know where you were. And then they'll contact that hospital. And then that bill will be taken care of, you know, through the VA. So, you know, one guy, he likes to travel. And he says, well, you know, I had this medical problem, you know, you know when I was up in uh, Bayfield. You know, and I had to use, you know, I had to use a civilian clinic, you know, to take care of this problem. It's like, now what do I do with this bill? Well, because it was, you know, a VA-related injury that he had to be treated for, it's covered 100%, you know, by the VA. You know, his stay, the ambulance, anything that he needed to be stabilized. And then once he was stabilized, he was transferred, you know, to the closest VA medical facility. So, so it's important to know, you know, too, in talking with Charlene and different people about there's a lot that goes on, you know, with VA healthcare than just here's the hospital. You know, there's a lot of other benefits. Sometimes, too, when you're talking about, you know, uh, homeless, you know, veterans is that they also have what's called a hardship program, you know, where a veteran may have been employed one day and the next thing you know they had lost their job, the factory closed, or... You know, you never know what the situation is, and, and now I really, you know, I have, I have this, but I can't pay for it. You know, a veteran can apply for what's called hardship, you know, and they'll look at the situation and, and they'll, you know, do their financial calculating, but then that veteran can get all the services that they were at little or no cost, you know, because of their change. Uh, uh, the major key for getting into, you know, applying for any VA, you know, benefit is your DD-214, your discharge paper. You know, that right there, you know, lets the, you know, the VA, the clinic, the county veteran service officer that, that you are, you know, sad to say you have to prove who you are nowadays just because of the way the world is, you know. And so a, a, a virtue, you know, basically to apply for any state, federal, county VA needs a copy of your discharge papers. You know, and it determines your eligibility, you know, uh, honorable, you know, even a, a general, you know, makes you eligible for all VA benefits, you know, uh, DD-214. And so if you don't have one, you know, where do I go? You know, you contact the county veteran service office, you know, or if you, when you got out of the service and you recorded it at the courthouse, you can get a copy there, you know, or, you know, if, if that wasn't registered, you would contact Charlene at the County Veterans Service Office and fill out a form, and they would request it from the National Personal Records Department down in St. Louis, you know, and then that would come in the mail, you know, from their records, because there's records, you know, that from your military time that serve. But in some cases, too, like my, my father was a World War II veteran, and back in the 70s, they had let us know that uh, 
There is paper, there are some of the veterans' records are destroyed down there from, you know, P to Z, whatever. So when I requested my dad's military records, they said, you know, they were destroyed in the fire. I said, well, now what do we do? They can, re they can reconstruct from what they do have you know, that they can put a DD-2 together for, you know, for them. So they re reconstructed what paperwork that they did have because there's other places that military records are stored. And the next thing you know, it took them a while, but they got a copy, we got a copy of his DD-214. Sometimes too, you know, unfortunately, that a veteran for different reasons might get a, a bad discharge coming out, you know, and the veterans that I've met with over the time and, and you know, and give guidance to that came out, you know, a lot of times the reason that they may have gotten this bad discharge is that it was after coming back from the war or they had been injured in the military and it was hard for them to perform their duties or because after returning back from the war, you know, they had difficulties readjusting back into the, the military, you know, structured life. And the next thing you know, they violated, you know, and, and, and broke some rules and regulations, you know, and they got a bad discharge out. I work, there's people throughout the system here in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, but just recently met with uh, Gunnery Sergeant Gill Gillitz from the United States Marines that a veteran, you know, can find out if he or she is eligible for a discharge upgrade, you know. But also, too, you know, a lot of times, that, you know, that their discharge might not be upgraded, but here, with, the, with the paperwork process and the people that I would direct the veterans to, they can still find a way, you know, with paperwork, you know, to get that veteran eligible for VA health care. You know, I was working with a returning Iraqi veteran. He did two tours in Iraq, served 99.9% .9 of his entire, you know, tour faithfully. And when he got back, he started having problems because of the things that he encountered, you know. And the next thing you know, they wrote him up and gave him, gave him a bad discharge out, you know. Almost, you know, I'd say uh, three years and uh, 360 days he served faithfully, you know, and he had, you know, basically, you know, because of that bad discharge, he wasn't eligible for anything. And one day he came in and says, you know, is, is there any chance? And it's like, well, let me, let's contact these different people that work with discharge upgrades, you know, and there might be a chance. And what I found out, you know, is that because uh, even too, you know, a veteran might be having, you know, want to file for a service-connected injury, and they're even denied that because of their discharge. You know, well, I talked to, you know, her name is Ana Fierro in, in the benefits department, and she says no. No, there's always that chance that a veteran can be approved for serv filing for a service-connected disability. And she says what they do is they request all the veterans, you know, military paperwork, and they review it. And they said, if it's, and if his paperwork shows, you know, that this veteran served the majority of their time, you know, as they, you know, they served as they should, you know, they can say, okay, sure, he's got the, he or she has got this bad discharge, but because a majority of their time in the service was served honorably and they did as they should, they can approve that veteran, you know, to be, to be able to file a service-connected disability claim. And basically what that is, is like workman's comp, being heard on the job. So now this veteran is in the process after he's been out since 2005, you know, and struggling with his physical and his emotional injuries just to try to make ends meet. Now he's in the process, you know, of possibly, you know, being found and approved, you know, for VA benefits. You know, so that's one thing, you know, you just never know what you're eligible for until you ask. Next, please. And right here, you know, too, you know, uh, uh, County Veterans Service Office, you know, I would be the first person to contact, you know, when it comes to whether it's your DD-214 or you'd want to file a claim for injuries, you know, to request medical records or your family might just want, you know, you know, if the veteran, you know, has passed on, just to get, you know, documentation of, you know, to kind of put, in a, you know, an album together, you know, for, you know, for history, for their family history, you know, and what they would do is they would send it down to the National Personnel Records Department, you know. There's also two, you know, where you can get on, well, like everything on the internet, and it's called e-benefits, you know, and you can do everything and request your military records, you can request a reissuance of all your medals, you know, through the internet, you know. 
and that's where the county veteran service office would have all the internet sites if you want to contact through the internet national personnel records department or if you want to find out about your your benefits you know there's called e-benefits and also too there's always the state department and they have their own website which is wdva.org which is you know kind of hooks you up with the wisconsin department of veterans affairs and anything and everything about you know what am i what am i entitled to for veterans benefits and how do i apply it can all be done on their website yeah. here again you know federal benefits you know, you know we, talk, we touched a little bit about that but yeah the best person to go to unless you're in milwaukee you can stop down at the regional office but your county veteran service officer can also help you too with finding out what federal benefits are out there what you're eligible for but then getting you all the paperwork that you need to fill out that papers but also too is that they just don't give you the paperwork and say here you go you know they actually help you fit, sit down and get everything filled out because you know you got to have the right words in the right places and you know your eyes got to be dotted otherwise they send it all back to you so they can guide you through all the paperwork and kind of like be the middleman and help you get everything sent out. You know, the hospitals and medical centers, you know, yeah, throughout the state of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, you know, they're putting a brand new, I kind of like to call it the Super Walmart Green Bay Clinic up in Madison, or up in Green Bay. There's Toma, there's Iron Mountain. And like I said, in the back of this, this federal benefits book, you know, there's a directory of all the VA medical centers, VA hospitals, clinics, vet centers, uh, federal benefits, regional office, telephone numbers, addresses. So that way, if you're traveling, whether here in the state or out of state, you know, make sure you grab one of those because that's going to give you addresses and telephone numbers in case you would run out of medication you know, or you would have some kind of need, you know, through the VA that you can look in that directory and find, oh, you know, there's a small clinic in Rhinelander. I looked at it and I thought it was the county highway shop, you know. When I turned the corner, it's like, oh, no, it's a VA clinic, you know. So anytime that you might be out and about, yeah, this is a, a good tool to have because it tells you where you need to go. And the vet center I was talking about, yeah, we're Department of Veterans Affairs. We're a federal, uh, a federal agency. And how I describe the vet center is like a specialty. If you would go to your doctor, you'd say, well, you know, with, with that foot problem, I need to send you to a specialist. And that's what the vet center is. We work with the VA Medical Center, but we're not a part of them. You know, our vet center, we specialize in providing a variety of different support and counseling services to all war zone veterans and their families. So we provide support services such as, you know, uh, providing counseling for veterans having a difficult time making that transition back to civilian life, uh, post-max stress disorder, sexual trauma, alcohol and drug problems, gambling, but also too we know we realize that those veterans coming through the door have more than one need, you know. So we try to know the best we can of all the different services like the Red Cross might offer, you know, or the auxiliary, you know, or you know. Uh, what does I refer to veteran the other day to the share program? You know, you know, he had lost his job. You know, and now trying to make ends meet as to you know providing food and different things. You know, for his family, it's like, you know, you know, what are we going to do for food? And I said, well, there's a share program throughout the state. Got him hooked up with the share program. Now he's got the food and the things that he needs to care for his family. And since he's got time, he volunteers there. So it gives him that sense of fulfillment that you know he's. You know, sometimes it's, you know, it's hard, you know, like somebody mentioned before, the military, you know, you know it's, it's hard to ask for help when you've been trained to be the force of one. You know, but we all know that in, there are many times during the military that we need more support. You know, there are some things that you can do as one, but a lot of times you need your unit that comes behind you to get through the situation. You know, and the different programs, you know, that we offer is, we also have a marriage and family counselor. We also have programs for children. Um, all the vet center services that we offer, you know, it's a lifetime benefit, you know, and so a veteran can use us as offering as little that he or she wants. And there's never a fee for any of the services that we provide, but also too that we're mobile. You know, we're at the VA hospital, you have to go to them. Now, 
with Wisconsin, there's uh, Milwaukee, Madison, Green Bay, Wausau, La Crosse, you know, vet centers. But we have outposts because we realize that sometimes, you know, for a variety of different reasons, you can't travel to those 50, 100, three hour drives. So here in Sheboygan, you know, we have an outpost. I, I, I'm in the County Veterans Service Office. I have an outpost up in the Menominee Reservation over in Dodge County. You know, Green Bay has their outposts throughout, you know, the, uh, without the, in their catchment area. Because sometimes, too, if a veteran's working, you know, you know, they can't travel 50, 100 miles because they get done with work at 430, you know, you know, it makes it a tough going. We also have evening hours. We also provide, you know, uh, you know, at a veteran bringing, she had to bring in her, her, her child the other day because I don't got child care. Well, bring him in. We got different things, you know, you know, you know, you know, for your daughter to play with while we talk. You know, so we try to do the best that we can. But also, too, like I said, you know, there's military one source. Now, we cannot provide services to active duty. You know, but we still, any veteran that comes through our doors, you know, we will assist them. And for somebody that might come through, you know, uh, you know, that comes in, it's like I'm still, I'm still active. You know, we would send them to military one source. You know? And there's the warrior regiment program. You know, I just met with Gunny Sergeant Gillitz here the other day, and here again too, they offer a lot of different programs. You know, for veterans having problems with their benefits, discharge upgrade, financial assistance, and grants. You know, and so. Uh, Military Family Life and Consultants, Transitional Housing Program. Recently, I, I assisted a veteran to go into the Homeless Veterans Program up in Chippewa Falls. You know, he didn't realize that it's something that he is eligible for. State benefits, like I said, you know, you know, state to state, every benefit is different. They have their own different services that they might offer. And each state, too, just like Wisconsin, has county veteran service offices. So every county in that state, like Wisconsin, has a county veteran service office that can give you the details. Why? Well, just here from Wisconsin, well, you have to be a resident of uh, 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 Texas for so many days, and then once you're eligible, you know, these are the different benefits that you can apply for. Well, that well, we didn't get that in Wisconsin. Well, that's because we're Texas. And then here again, too, you know, the, the, the best person I can you know, because I travel so much, you know, and like I said, I don't know everything about benefits, but what I do know is that the most important person to know in your county is who do you contact, and that's the County Veterans Service Office. They, they, they know anything and everything that you need to know about your state benefits, you know, and they can assist you for applying with all those benefits. And that's one thing, you know, it's important to know these people because sometimes, you know, Rumors get spread. Um, a few years ago, I, I met with a veteran uh, down at an outreach down in Milwaukee, and she said that uh, she was looking at the benefits table. I said, well, what are you eligible for? And she says, well, nothing. And I, and I said, you know, did you serve your four? And she says, yes. You know, did I said, you receive an honorable discharge? Yes. And I said, well, what makes you think you're not eligible? Well, you know, somebody told me because I served peacetime, I wasn't eligible. So she had gone years without ever knowing that she had all these benefits. And I said, the one thing about benefits is that, you know, they do differ in regards to their specific benefits geared towards the needs of war zone veterans, you know, and, and peacetime veterans wouldn't be eligible for those. But there's a ton of veteran benefits for everybody that served peacetime. You know, there's housing benefits, there's home loan benefits, you know, there's, you know, uh, education benefits, you know, uh, you know, being able to go to the veterans home up in King, you know, and I said, you know, and I handed him one of those federal benefit books and a state benefit book. And I said, you know, where it differs with, you know, veterans who served in the war zone is that they have different needs, you know, because of their war zone experiences and injuries. And those are specific for them. But everything else in this state book, the federal book, they're lifetime benefits. You know, one thing too about benefits too is that I had a veteran that, that came in one day and he was looking for employment and I seen him as limping and I said, well, did you recently hurt yourself? And he, and he said, no. He says, I was playing basketball, you know, while I was active duty and I fell and broke my ankle, you know, and when I got discharged out, it's caused me problems in my everyday life, holding down a job, you know, going to school. It's kind of limited me. And I said, well, did you ever file a, a service-connected disability claim? He says, no, it's not war zone. And I said, it doesn't matter. You know, a, a service-connected disability claim is just basically workman's comp, you know. 
And so he was still active, you know, and he was still serving, and he got hurt on the job. You know, so he could have been playing basketball, you know. You know, they could have got hurt during boot camp, during training, you know. They could have been getting out of their truck, you know, and banged their head against the door. You know, uh, they have, could have been exposed to something, a chemical or, you know, that, that all of a sudden, you know, it caused them to start having medical problems while there. So here again, too, you know, this veteran didn't realize. Somebody told him the only way that you can file for a disability claim is that you have to be hurt in war. I said, no. You know, it's a workman's comp claim. So from the day that you say, I do, until your very end day, no matter what you're doing, you know, you and, and you got injured and you received medical treatment and then once you got out, that medical problem was still giving you problems, you can contact your county veteran service officer to say, hey, you know, what I was, you know, uh, 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 working in the kitchen, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the, 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 uh, one of the pots fell over and I got all this burning water on me or I was working in maintenance or no matter what it was and I got injured. I was treated for it, you know, and since I've been out, you know, it's been causing me problems ever since. Contact your county veteran service officer to file a disability claim because you were injured on the job. You know, and here again, too, for the emotional, you know, injuries that a veteran might experience, there's a variety of different services. The VA has both outpatient, you know, and inpatient programs, and listed in that, in the book, too, it, it lists all the resources, the, the outpatient clinics for the veterans, depending on where they are in the state. There's the Veteran Suicide Crisis Line, where it's manned 24 7, you know. And then that crisis line, too, can say, you know, where are you from? And that person get, get hooked up, you know, with the VA hospital, clinic, vet center, depending where they're at. You know, and there are different, different services, vet centers, uh, veterans crisis line, uh, real warriors, wounded regiment, you know. So, too, you know, if a veteran calls up, you know, that's still active duty, you know, we have resources like military one source that we can refer that veteran to. And sometimes, too, you know, what might keep a person, you know, kind of hesitant about, you know, getting these services is that I still, I'm still in the military or I still want to be in the military or my job. Everything about the services that the vet center and the VA medical center's office is confidential. The only way that anybody can get any type of of information is if that veteran size a release of information saying this is a specific person and this is the specific information that I want to give to them. You know, even too, if somebody calls up and says, you know, my dad or my mom is at, the, at your vet center, you know, can you give them this message? We can't even acknowledge that person because we don't know for sure. But here again, too, it's all about protecting that confidentiality. And how does that make it better for the veteran? I feel safe. I could come here you know, and know that I'm safe and talk about the things that I need to talk about and not have to worry about word getting out or, or you know, um, I, I'm still in the reserves, you know, I still want to continue my military history. Can they call up and ask information about me? I said, no. Well, they can, but we won't give it to them. Unless you sign a release saying, you know, I want to give this information to, you know, so-and-so sergeant, but other than that, you know, the recovery in their program, you know, is safe. So then they can, can you know, can continue on to doing what they want to do. But also, too, you know, uh, we talked about uh, we work with community programs, you know, so we also, you know, here again, too, because veterans' needs, you know, in recovery differ, you know, they might not want to go through the regimen at the VA or it's just not a good fit. So we try to have a variety of information regarding, you know, what does the community offer? There's a program down in the south side of Wisconsin, you know, that uses horse therapy to work with veterans in their recovery. You know, where I work up in the Menominee Veteran, you know, up in the reservation, they have their traditional ways, you know, of recovery and healing for the veterans. You know, um, here in Sheboygan, there is the, is the woman that offered yoga classes. You know, so it's important to have these because in order for that veteran to recover, you know, finding out what works best for them. And if you only have one way and say, you know, no, I'm, I'm really not interested in that. Do you have anything else? No. You know, so, you know, sir, that veteran stands, you know, having to suffer, you know. So that's where we try to make sure that we know 
who in you know in the VA and who in the community you know the services offered so that way that veteran gets what they need to suit their needs the best housing and homeless programs you know here again too uh, throughout the United States there's programs set up you know to address the needs you know of, of homeless veterans right now down in, down in uh, Milwaukee at the VA hospital uh, Jill Feldman is just starting up you know the Women's Resource Center and Healthcare Center you know it's a whole new program you know that's being you know geared you know to, to the other needs because one size don't fit all you know and also too here throughout Wisconsin you know there are homeless programs you know up in King you know Chippewa Falls Union Grove Fort McCoy both programs geared for the men and women that served in the military um, housing benefits yeah there's a variety of different state and federal home loan programs out there you know and they vary in what you know the, uh, how uh, I guess what would you say uh, how they run their program like there's I think it's the federal benefit program where you don't have to have a down payment you know and they have their different rules and regulations where the state you know their interest might be cheaper but they might require a small down payment so the programs differ you know, when I was up in the reservation the other day, the veteran wanted, wanted to buy the house he lived in because that's what he grew up in. And now they have a program for uh, tribal veterans to buy trust land, you know. But also, too, there's also programs that as the veteran's needs change, you know, he might need to get a different uh, bathroom set up. He might need to have, you know, their doors widened. You know, she might need a ramp, you know, built up to her home. There's programs, you know, both federal, state, and county that can gear that house and change it to meet the needs of that, the changing needs of the veterans. Here, you know, in the program, you know, also too works, you know, you know, for, you know, for the homeless students and community. And basically, you know, here again, you know, all the different services I offered, you know, here again too, there are special departments within that, that, uh, that home to address the needs of homeless students, you know, homeless families. So everybody, everybody's pretty well covered. Here again, to education, you know, like I said, you know, there's the federal benefit program. They have all the different programs they offer. They, they may cover all of your tradition, you know, uh, tuition and housing and books, you know, but also, too, that might differ, you know, from Wisconsin benefits. And with state, like Wisconsin state education benefits, they cover UW systems, you know, UW Madison, UW Fond du Lac, UW Sheboygan, all the technical schools. You know, I'm not quite sure a person might say, well, I'd like to go out to Lakeland College. That's private. I'm not exactly sure, at least for this state, if that would cover a private school. But otherwise, you know, it covers all the Wisconsin, you know, UW systems and technical schools. You know, one thing I found out the other day is that I, I was working with a veteran that had, and she had a service-connected disability. And she said, I'd like to go full-time to school, but I can't afford it found out from the, uh, the Green Bay uh, Vocational Rehabilitation Council, he says, you know, if that veteran, if she wants to go full-time to school, what, you know, she'd have to go through the voc rehab program, but then what would happen is that, let's say that she has a 30% service-connected disability, once she starts full-time going to school and, and during those four years, her disability be raised to 100%. So then she doesn't have to worry about, you know, how am I going to, you know, feed my family? How am I going to pay for car benefits? So through that entire, you know, her, her college career, you know, her discharge will be raised up to 100% so that she continue in school. Once she gets out, it might get lowered back to what it was. But during that time, it's just, geez, well, that's a, that's a huge load off. And the last thing I know is she was talking to the Volk Rehab, you know, Albert at Green Bay and getting everything started. So here again, too, there's so many little details to all these big benefits, you know, and that's why it's so important to know who to contact, you know, to help this. You know, the same thing with employment. You know, Wisconsin has, you know, what's called, you know, veterans representatives at their different job centers. Here in Sheboygan, um, I can't remember what his name is, but he travels from Manitowoc, and he's a veteran specialist because sometimes, you know, here again, too, with benefits, you know, they're different. There are certain benefits that are specifically geared for veterans. Uh, sometimes companies will request specifically, we want to hire veterans. You know, we had a company down in Milwaukee, you know, that we found out that was looking for forklift drivers, 
and they wanted veterans and they would provide all the training that they would need to certify them for you know forklift driving you know also too you know with employment because sometimes a veteran might have you know service connected disabilities there are also you know uh, veterans representatives that work specifically with them to find out exactly what it is their disability is and then gears a program and training you know and educates them too about their rights as disabled people you know for employment and like I said there's one veteran organ uh, I can't remember what his name is but he comes to greet you know to Sheboygan you know every other month you know and I had a veteran the other day that was self-employed and and well with housing being what it had no business, he had no work. So there's a lot of education grants, there's retraining programs, there's schooling specifically for veterans, you know, and you know, it's like, where do I find out about them? You know, contact Charlene or, you know, you call the vets there and say, you know, we're one of these, you know, uh, workforce development, you know, veterans representatives, this is where I live. Well, here's his phone number, give him a call, and then you can get everything and find out here again, too, all those educational benefits and retraining grants that you might have you know, for the status of being a veteran, but there's also this preference too. You know, where working within the VA, they look to hire veterans first before they hire a civilian. So there's a lot of different, you know, employment rights and benefits that, you know, it's hard to match. Financial, you know, again too, uh, financial aid, you know, uh, what they have with the federal benefits, it's called a, a, a a non a non service connected disability and basically what that is it's kind of like I guess it might compare it to like SSI you know a veteran doesn't have any service connected disabilities but you know he's experiencing financial hardship you know and what they can do is they can apply for this non service connected pension that would pay them a monthly income you know to live you know and um, it's something I didn't know about till I talked to one of the county veteran service officers and said, hey, I have, I have this veteran, in my, you know, I talked with, you know, he, he served, you know, peacetime, but, you know, he's having a hard time, you know, you know, with paying his bills, paying his home, paying his rent. And he says, well, we, he might be eligible for a non-service connected pension. You know, next thing you know, you know they gave him money for his, his apartment, for his utilities. It's the same thing in Sheboygan County. I know Fred was here before. And he told me about all the, the benefits specifically for financial assistance that Sheboygan County has. Now, down in Milwaukee, they don't have that. So, but also too, you know, we work with state, federal, you know, to, you know, all the different home, you know, community organizations. Now, like this one veteran that referred to the SHARE program. Now, him and his family are eating well, and it's one less thing that he has to worry about, you know, because now they have what they need. Um, here again, too, you know, Social Security disability, you know, where do I file there are certain benefits here it's called the wounded warriors program when it comes to social security you know and and, and i think what that program is about is it it speeds up the disability process you know for that veteran where you know, compared to civilian it goes through the normal process you know where it takes who knows how long but with the wounded warriors program you know it speeds it up so that veteran can get you know the the income and the care the medical care that they might need you know in a faster time and now when it comes to legal services there's a whole new change you know you know program you know over these last few years about you know you know addressing the needs of veterans you know who might come into the legal court and what they've been discovering you know is that many times is that you know when we look at the training you know of the veteran you know they're trained for war you know, everything that the veteran is trained for in the military would throw them in prison here in the civilian world. You know, what's been happening throughout the years is that when these veterans come out of the, the service, you know, and for, you know, for those who may have, you know, you know, you know, because of that military training, it may cause them to experience some legal problems, you know, in the civilian world. And so what's happening is that throughout the state, like here in, you know, in Sheboygan County, they're putting together what's called veterans courts. You know, so when that veteran comes to court, you know, and as they're talking with that veteran and they find out, you know, it's because of his or her military experiences that, you know, that are causing them legal problems, you know, it takes a different path where instead of just in the olden days, you know, you might just go to county jail, you might go to prison, you know, you get locked up. Now, if they see that that veteran is experiencing some type of problem, you know, due to the military, 
and that was causing them problems. They got back out in the civilian world. They will offer that veteran, you know, different types of VA treatment, you know, to get that veteran the help that they need. A few years ago, I was asked by the Menominee Tribal Police Department, you know, to give a presentation about, you know, how does military service, you know, cause problems out in the, in the, you know, how can that lead to, you know, illegal problems when the veterans get out, you know? Because what they had been seeing is they started seeing a whole lot of veterans, especially those coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, in the legal system, you know? And, uh, and a, a good example is, is that, you know, you know, one of the Iraqi veterans, when he came back home, he drove just like he used to drive in Iraq, you know? Fast, you don't slow down for nothing. You try to keep, you know, your, your area around you open when you park, you know? And when he came back here, that's how he drove. The next thing you know, he lost his license. The next thing you know, he got in some accidents. The next thing you know, he was before the court. You know, and in the old days, you know, they would say, well, we're taking your license, you know, you know, here's a whole bunch of tickets for you and off you go. You know, but you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the veteran's fault, it's how he had been trained. You know, and that's a hard thing, you know, when, you, when you've learned to live this way of life and you come back into the civilian world and there's no boot camp to train you to be a civilian again, you carry on the military ways. You know, they said, you know, you know, sometimes we might have to go to a veteran's house, you know, and the next thing you know, you know, you know, we got a, a situation. You know, if you're coming, you know, you're, you're going to go back to the military. You're trained for war. You know, and veterans that has happened to he had done, you know, he had done four tours in Iraq, and so when he got out of the service, you know, all he knew was, the, you know, his world was war, and that's how he lived. And when these police came, you know, because you know of something going on at the house, you know, when they locked and loaded, so did he. And when they moved, he counteracted, you know, because, you know, what is a soldier? It's a different type of police officer, you know. So the next thing you know, you know, once they finally got, you know, obtained him and, and put him away, you know, you know, the courts up there, because they had this training and they found out, well, this veteran serves two tours, you know, you know, four tours in Iraq, you know, and when his time was up, you know, out you go, and he still lived just like he did, you know, in Iraq. You know, he still had his battle mind, you know. This is all he knew. And so when they discovered, you know, that he had done these tours, he, had, he hadn't been out that long, you know, well, these are the treatment programs and things that we want to offer because we see that your time and problems is due to your, you know, your, your experiences. So that's where everything is being changed, you know, in different states, different counties, you know, to aid that veteran of the past and present because once it's discovered, you know, that these problems are due to problems that they've had in the military, you know, it's what we need to do to serve these veterans, you know. But like I said, every county is different. Every state is different, you know. And depending if you live in a different county, it's something that they, they bring to that county, you know, to the veteran service officer or you know, you know, the, your, your senators and representatives in the state, because, you know, it's sad to say that there is a lot of veterans that are incarcerated in county jails that are due to there because of their military experiences. But that's one thing too that uh, that's also changed is that I work with a gentleman down in Milwaukee at the VA, the David Kagabatang, and he works with incarcerated veterans. It's a new program that's been gone for a couple of years, and he has certain federal prisons that he'll go to once veterans that have been identified and he'll go in there about six months before they're released and do an assessment on them veterans to find out what they need, you know. So he goes to, you know, all the federal you know, uh, penitentiaries, you know, you know, to Cheetah and do an assessment with the veteran. Here again, too, you know, it might be because of military experiences and problems that the veteran ended up where they did. So that way, when the veteran gets out, they're already hooked up, you know, and uh, admitted into the VA health care. You know, they've been contacted to find out what health care, emotional, spiritual, that they may need, you know, employment services, as, you know, to help that veteran retrain, maybe filing for a service-connected disability. You know, it's a program where they go to the veteran, you know, and find out what it is that veteran needs, you know. I've gone to a lot of local, you know, you know county jails, you know, facilities to meet with veterans to find out, you know, once I get out, you know, you know, you know, what do I do? Where do I go? Because I've been in this facility, am I still eligible for veterans' benefits? 
you know. So there's a lot, you know, they have a lot of questions. And for them, you know, where the counties and the, and the bailiffs and that like us coming in, because then once that veteran finds out that there's help once it gets out, the last thing that veteran might want to do is cause any problems. You know, or he might do or, or she might do what she needs to do to, you know, maintain so that we get out and I can get all the benefits, you know, to help me, you know, you know, re-gear life. Because if it wasn't for the military, I probably wouldn't be here in the first place. But we can't always say that. But there are a lot of new programs starting out to work with those veterans, you know, either just coming into the program or already in, the, you know, in the, in the facilities. And here again, too, you know, as we all talked here, there's a variety of different organizations out there, you know, both state, federal, and especially, you know, this is where it's important for the community resources because, you know, a lot of times, you know, this is where the veteran is, you know, and, and because they don't live next to a regional office or a state benefits place, you know, they might not really need to, you know, really know where to go, you know, and so everybody here, you know, is a re can be a resource for that veteran as to find out, you know, where can I go for these different services? Who can I talk to? You know, this is how we can best serve the veterans by knowing what's out there and who to contact. Because you never you know, you might meet them at church, you might meet them at the Piggly Wiggly, you might meet them at the hockey rink. You never know. You know, you know, you might be, you know, they might be standing outside of the, the Salvation Army. You know, because they just got back, you know, from Iraq, you know, and it's been hard to find a job, you know, and, you know, I got my children, you know, you know, I really don't know where to turn because a lot of times when you're just about to get out, you know, all you want is out. You know, and people like me and other people are sitting in front of all the veterans talking and all they hear is wonk, 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 let me out. And all of a sudden they're out and all of a sudden it's like, you know, my, you know now what? You know, now where do I go? You know, and so especially too, if you live in the rules, there might be a whole, a whole lot, of, there might not be a whole lot of people that they talk to, you know. So having this knowledge, you know, in, in the context, you know, you know, how can you serve your veterans? By knowing, you know, knowing a little bit, you know, about at least if nothing else, your county veteran service officer, because that person there can give them anything and everything that he or she needs to know. You know, here again too. You know, uh, you know the, the VFW is a great place. The American Legion, you know, AMVETS, Purple Heart, you know, they're all resources. You know, that can help veterans with their, you know, uh, finding out what they're eligible for, where to contact, you know, information. Yep, with this Department of Veterans Affairs. You know, you know, I work with the uh, county, you know, county, county human services here in Sheboygan. You know, they didn't realize that they're, you know, of the vet center and all the different services. So that way, if a veteran comes through the county and they might not be eligible for county services, and now instead of, well, we have nothing to offer you. But that's the important thing is like, you know, of asking a person is like, you know, are you a veteran? Because sometimes, you know, that's kept out, you know, and sometimes too, like someone has mentioned is that, you know, you know, the women don't consider them veterans, even though they raised their hand and did everything that, you know, that they was asked of, them, of everyone. You know, and the great thing about these VA benefits, too, is that for many of them, they're, they're lifetime benefits. Whether you're 23 getting out of the service or, you know, you're 86, you're 102, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, there's a lot of lifetime benefits out there, both not only for those you know, specific you know, benefits of our zone veterans, but all the uh, but all veterans in general, there's lifetime benefits. You know, because sometimes a person gets confused, like in the civilian world, like with filing a service, like a workman's comp claim, you got a year. You know, once that year is up, you know, it's all over. But with a service-connected disability, you know, I worked with a, a World War II veteran. He was a tail gunner in a B uh, B-17. You know, and their plane had gotten hit. You know, and the reason that he didn't file for benefits because he's like, there's other guys that need more than me. You know, so he came to us, you know, and he is 86 years old. And, you know, if it wouldn't have been for his flak jacket, you know, you know, and what little protection he had in this turret, you know, you know, he would have lost his life. You know, and then because, you know, when he turned to, you know, the county, you know, it's like he wasn't eligible for a lot of county services and state services. And finally, he came in, you know, you know, to the vet center, and he says, "Yeah, you know, our, our bomber was hit, you know, during the operation." 
you know, but it's because, you know, you know, there's other guys worse off than me. I made sure they got cared for first, but I said, you fall in line just like the rest of them. You know, so after 86 years, you know, you know, and all this time out of the service, you know, you finally got hooked up. But here again, too, is, you know, it's that military mind, you know, force of one. You know, don't show signs of weakness. You know, you know, you should be able to address any problem that comes and that confronts you. You know, but that's not always the story. And then when he found out everything that he was eligible for, you know, he says, oh, when can I have got this? I said, 60 years ago. So, but here again, too, you know, we work, we try to work with communities, churches, you know, anybody and everybody that opens our door to us, you know, we can walk in and provide them with this land navigation class about what we do, what's out there, you know, who to contact. Because somebody asked me, how do I, you know, best serve the veteran? I really don't know what their needs are. I'm not a veteran myself. Find out who they can contact when they do have a need. That's how you can show your respect and appreciation for everything they did by knowing. And here again, too, you know, it's all it's found throughout, you know, you know, a variety of different programs, phone books, calling. You know, there's also transportation, like in Sheboygan County. If a veteran has an appointment at the Cleveland Clinic or down at the Blocky, depending on Appleton Clinic, depending on where they may need to go, but for different reasons that they can't travel, take them to serve themselves, the county has a special transportation uh, uh, funding set up to take that veteran to their program. The VA has buses, you know, in the DAV that, that travel the state and pick up veterans depending if you live in, you know, uh, you know, you live over in Mayville or you live in Bayfield. You know, there are programs out there to provide transportation to those veterans to get them the, you know, the resources they need. And also, too, you know, there's a lot of programs out there, you know, uh, we're just getting all geared up for Camp American Legion. You know, it's not part of the VA, you know, uh, any part of it, but it's ran by American Legion, and its objective is to provide, you know, a retreat and, some re and rest and relaxation for veterans. It's up in Lake Tomahawk. I've volunteered up there, you know, to work on the camp, and uh, it's six to ten days free. All a person needs is a referral for their doctor, cabins, heating, plumbing, lights, three squares a day of recreation. There's a variety of different programs. And coming up in June, there is a, a, a woman's retreat coming up in uh, Camp American Legion. You know, and I've been up there, and if you'd never have, you know, boy, it's heaven. And with Camp American Legion, you know, here again, too, you know, it, it's free. You know, and each and every year you can apply to go up there and it's, it's a lifetime benefit. And again, too, you know, wellness programs, that's where you like with community services. Yeah, there's a, there's, I can't remember the, the correct name for it, but there's a program that an organization has put down in, in Kenosha County that uses horse therapy, you know, as a treatment form for veterans, you know. So it, it's important to know these different programs and working with the community because yeah, a group of veterans that I have in my group, they never knew of Camp American Legion, and all they've ever known is Milwaukee. And so I gave them the applications, they got their doctors to sign them, and they, you know, the only thing with Camp American Legion, you know, you got to get yourself there, but after that, you know, everything is provided. And, you know, seeing them after they come back, you know, it, it did so much for them, they would have never known. You know, and I would have never known if I didn't work in the community. You know, again, there are churches, you know, there's a bunch, you know, variety too, there's spiritual programs, you know, contacting churches, organizations, you know, because also too, that's the one thing that you never hear, you know, about the, the, the veterans coming out of the service. You might hear about how many people have just been deployed or were enlisted in the military. You hear about those who are injured in the service or may have lost their life, but what you never really hear when you, you know, for the veterans, for all the veterans coming out, how that time in the service may have hindered them emotionally, how you may have injured them spiritually. You hear about the physical wounds, but you don't hear about anything else, you know. And so that's where, too, you know, we work with a variety of different churches, programs. There's a, there's a program down in Milwaukee called Appointment Ministries, geared specifically for veterans, you know, so veterans who might be experiencing different, you know, spirituality injuries, you know, because of their service. You know, and they might go to their local chaplain, and the local chaplain can understand to a point, but because, you know, he, didn't, he or she didn't serve in the military, they can't 
give that veteran what they might need. So I say, here, contact, you know, I call him Chaplain Charlie with, with Point Men Ministries. You know, he works specifically, you know, and has served himself. So that way, you know, that veteran can take care of, you know, of himself or herself in regards to their spirituality. But that's one thing you don't hear. You don't hear about those, those types of injuries. You know, what else? You know, I guess that's the thing, you know, I, I, I can't tell you what else because things are always changing. You know, benefits are improving, new benefit programs are starting, there might be some things that might be decreasing in that, but that's the one thing I tell all veterans is that, you know, well, I really don't need that benefit right now. I said the important thing is, is to sign up for it anyway, because sometimes how things change in a person's life and because how the VA works, hurry up and get your stuff in and didn't wait, you know, when you need it and want it available is when, that, when you have that change occur. You know, but also too, I said, you know, you know, you know, because things change with benefits nowadays, you know, things get cut. And all of a sudden you might say, oh, I, I'm really interested in this housing grant, or I'm, I'm interested in this particular school program, you know, or this new program they have, you know, down at the VA in, in the Women's Resource, Resource Health Center. But I really don't need it now. All of a sudden something changes, all of a sudden you apply, oh, but well, we cut that program because nobody was using it. You know, so I said sign up for it now whether you need it or not because one thing it'll do, it'll keep, it'll keep that benefit alive and active so when they, that person has got the big cleaver out and they're looking to do, do the trim, well, wow, all these programs are really being utilized. You know, boy, look at all the people signing up for these programs. You know, let's keep them going. You know, or you might have a, a, all of a sudden a change in, I lost my job, you know. Well, it's going to take you uh, a couple months to get your education and retraining grants programs going. Well, what do I do before then compared to, oh, we see that you've already, you know, enrolled in this, this uh, VA uh, education program. Give us a week and we'll get everything rolling for you. Same thing with medical. You know, things change medically, you know, and where, you know, you might need this program. You go there and say, well, you know, we'll get your paperwork processed and we'll give you a call from anywhere from one day to a year. See you then. So, but sign up for those programs, you know, whether you need them now or not, because you just don't know when your, you know, changes might occur and you need it, or it's one of those benefits that if nobody uses, it might get directed to sending bees to outer space. You know, so with that, you know, I, I want to, again, you know, thank you for the opportunity to train you in land navigation, you know, and my car is over there, and, and, yeah, find out for yourself what's out there because, you know, that's, that's the best way that you can show your appreciation for veterans is knowing. So, so thank you. I'm Mary Liz Murphy. I'm the Service and Armed Forces Manager for the Western Wisconsin Region of the American Red Cross. And I'm over on the eastern side with uh, permission from the eastern, um, my counterpart, so he knows I'm here and, and we partner with everything that we do. So um, again, thank you, Ronnie. It was a wonderful presentation. I'm just going to do a quick wrap up of what, where do we go from here. So um, first, I want to tell you a couple resources that we have. Kathy has done a fantastic job putting together your resource book. So you're not expected to memorize everything we gave you today. All that information is in the resource book for you to take with you. She's also put together a fantastic uh, little brochure that summarizes key resources that you might need. These are for you to take with you. They're up here on the desk. Um, so we'll, at, after the session, you're welcome to take those. And they're a great resource to give to women veterans to take home with them because they highlight those key resources they might need. Um, so, so the goal here today was to give you the outline of what the services are and all the wonderful things that are available for veterans um, as they come in and you find out what their needs are. You're not ever expected to have that memorized. What we, what we don't want to become is the problem where we're trying to answer benefit questions, but we really don't know those answers. Um, what we want to be is proactive and make sure we take our veterans to the proper people so they can answer those questions. So who are you going to take them to for benefit questions county thank you the county veteran service officer the cvso and if they need counseling or they have other questions who are we going to go to the vet centers and the vet centers are so important because of that confidentiality piece so many times they're nervous especially women i think 
nervous about going back into the military system, especially if they've had experience. And the vet centers offer that confidentiality. I think that's so key. They're peer-to-peer -peer support, uh, they're trained counselors, and they offer that confidentiality piece. And I think letting them know that um, is really important. So they, we consider them the of that counseling and that recovering program. So where do we go from here? We have a handout we're passing out to you to talk about that. So pretty much, um, uh, pretty much it's, it, there's, there's sky's your limit. There's really no blueprint. As far as your creativity, and women are very creative, as far as your creativity and where you want to go from here, um, you are free to do that. So some of the ideas we brainstormed is to hold an open house for women veterans and invite them in to come and learn about their benefits. You can invite the vet center back in. You can invite the CVSO back in, but have maybe an open house, a free lunch, maybe have child care in the back if they have children, um, have uh, gift gas cards, gas is so pricey, maybe to have a little um, catch, you can have some gas cards you could offer, or you can have another raffle, uh, but some way to bring them in to have an open house and offer um, some more information for them and build those relationships. Uh, another suggestion would be to have something held around your holiday time. The next holiday coming up would be Easter. Uh, you might want to have an Easter bunny egg hunt for, I'm sorry, that's my cell phone buried somewhere. Yeah, another Easter, an Easter egg hunt for their, their kids or, or some spring fling where we can talk about um, renewing our spirits during spring. We do have Mother's Day coming up. If the veteran is a mother, is she on her own? Who's going to honor her on Mother's Day? So many female veterans in this current war went and served. They came back. The guys are given some time. Take some time before you come back and be father and take care of the kids. The girls, here's your kid. We took care of it while you were gone. Here it is. And they have to walk into those motherhood feet right away. And, and again, we do that, don't we? And we don't take care of our needs. They may be couch surfing, they may be living at home still, and that's how we define homelessness. Are you, are you in your own apartment or your own home where you are paying the rent successfully? If, the, if you're not doing that, then you're homeless. And so we want to make sure that we honor them on Mother's Day. So if they're a mother, you can have a special event for Mother's Day for them. Maybe get some local businesses to offer some free coupons or free items for them and, and, and provide that loving support for them on Mother's Day weekend. You have the Flag Day coming up and Memorial Day coming up. Flag Day weekend is May 19th. Then you've got Memorial Day weekend uh, about a week or two after. Um, I mean, sorry, Armed Forces Day. Flag Day is June. I'm going to say that. Look, you're right. I got that wrong. Armed Forces um, Day is that May 19th weekend. Um, and then Memorial Day shortly after that. So those are some opportunities to really get out in your community and offer um, an idea. Uh, some, some groups love potlucks and they were going to have a monthly potluck or a coffee day or a coffee shop for women veterans. So they're really the sky's the limit where you proceed from here. And the last page of the booklet we gave you, it lists all the counties and the veterans uh, the women veterans in your county. So you can look your county up and it breaks those women veterans down by age group. So you might have something different. If you have a large number of World War II veterans, don't assume that they um, are taken care of. This is a very different period in history for all of us. There may be World War II women veterans who are struggling, who have lost benefits, who have lost jobs, and, and they may be on the verge of homelessness, or they may be living with family. And, and as Rodney said, they're not aware they have benefits. They've gone all these years and didn't know that they had benefits. So that may be a population you want to have uh, a potluck for, welcome them in, advertise that through senior centers, advertise that through the libraries, um, through Department of Aging, try to flush them out of your community and welcome them into your sisterhood. Another would be uh, the young veterans. They may want more of a coffee shop meeting once a month to talk about the issues they're going through. Um, talk about what it's like to be young, a veteran, and have these issues. They did, and they didn't know they were veterans. They didn't know that they are entitled to things. We ask you actually not to advertise if you're a veteran, but to advertise have you served in the armed forces because women won't identify themselves as veterans. So when you market your programs, we want you to ask, have you served in the armed forces? And then we want to welcome you in and have um, a program for you here. So really, um, the sky's the limit where you can go with this and any of your ideas um, that, that you can think of is really a way to bring them in. And don't worry if the first time you have something, you get one veteran. 
that's successful, right? We build one sisterhood at a time, one veteran at a time in sisterhood we build. So if you bring one in, that's great. They talk to each other, don't think they don't. So if they're couch surfing or, or they probably have a friend who's a veteran and she is a friend who's a veteran. So the next time you have your event, she'll bring that veteran along. And then the next time she'll bring somebody along. So don't think that you're, that you're not successful if you don't have a lot of group. It's one veteran at a time in sisterhood. So the, the idea is we build that sisterhood, we build that mentoring program, and we help them reconnect into our communities, reconnect onto their feet so they can be successful in life. What we're here for so your task now is to be that army for them to go out to the communities and try to um, brainstorm how to bring them into your fold how to offer those services and how to build those relationships with them so that we're walking them back into the normalcy of life and on their feet and in that sisterhood and that's what we can offer you are our army Rodney can't be everywhere and I can't be everywhere and Kathy Walmer can't be everywhere but you're everywhere you're in every community in every county and the CVSO can't be everywhere but they've got you now they've got you as their army to go out there and build that support to the women veterans and the CVSOs are elected officials so as a as a citizen and a non-for-profits we we can support them so if they say you know we want to do more but our county's only given us this amount of money we can go and support the county and say you know we want more money more hours more time to go to our CVSO for our veterans in our community um, and on the other hand if you have a CVSO in a community who's not doing the job we can hold their feet to the fire as Kathy and I say and say you know we're here now we're gonna make sure you're doing that job and we're gonna support you to succeed so, um, so those are those are things we can do. So you are the empowerment for your community. You are the way that we can reach all those women veterans and bring them back to success in the sisterhood of support as they uh, work forward in their lives and, and return to normalcy. So I want to open it up for questions. Does anyone have a question for me, for Rodney, or for Kathy? Yes. Formative and a lot of good information, and. Um, at this time, what we would like to uh, progress, uh, Judge An An Angela Sakadich, <laughs> very good, is here to tell us a little bit about that court that Rodney uh, mentioned, and it will be starting here next month. So she's going to just fill us in a little bit on that, and then we're going to go into lunch, or we're not go into, is it closer? Well, well, we'll have lunch, and then um, we'll have the drawing. Um, say if every, what time is it, quarter to 12? Say 10 after 12, just, you know, 10 after 12, we'll have the drawing at the, for the auction things over here, and um, we'll be getting us, move on to lunches, things. <laughs> and, <laughs> sorry. Angela. Thank you so much. Um, hi, as you were told, I'm Judge Angela Sikevich, uh, Branch 3 here in Sheboygan County, and I was so happy to hear our last speaker talk about veterans' courts. They're starting all over the state. The first one was in Buffalo, New York, but they are sprouting up all over, and we're really happy to have one here. We've been working on it for over a year. I've been working very closely with our uh, county veteran service officer as well as the Sheriff's Department, Public Defender's Office, DA's Office, Probation and Parole. And we have noticed a lot of veterans that are involved in the criminal justice system, just as our last speaker was talking about. Um, we see a lot of domestic violence, um, a lot of people that are self-medicating. As you know, with the recent conflicts, there's so much traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress syndrome, and just some veterans that have lost their way and have gotten into alcohol and drugs. Um, we are focusing on combat veterans, but you do not have to be a combat veteran. You just have to be a veteran that has a treatable need and is willing to uh, leave the criminal justice system and work on getting that treatment. Um, what will happen is our Sheriff's Department has already started identifying veterans. Um, a lot of the people that I'm working with understand that people don't always realize that they are veteran, as you've heard today, so we're asking, have you served in the military? And so that's the first step, is to identify the veterans in the criminal justice system. The next step is to have either the veteran themselves or a public defender or their defense attorney work with the DA to establish a contract that's approved by the court. And what the contract does is the veteran will agree to get the treatment that he or she needs 
and to abide by some other rules, and in exchange, they're out of the criminal justice system for about a year to a year and a half. If they successfully complete veterans court, their charges will either be dismissed or they'll get a lesser sentence. Um, if they're not successful, unfortunately, they'll go right back to criminal court, but they'll just be in the same boat. Um, what happens is once this contract is signed, the judge that they're in front of asks them to come to branch three here in Sheboygan County to veterans court. We will be servicing about six different counties, all of our surrounding counties. Almost all of the veterans courts in Wisconsin are regional. Um, it's because we have to have someone from the VA come to Veterans Court, which will hold about once a month here. And um, that it's a victim, uh, a victim justice coordinator, outreach coordinator, veterans, uh, someone from the VA. And they'll let us know how the veteran is progressing. A very key component to Veterans Courts are mentors. Each veteran will be set up with a mentor, which is a volunteer, and we're hoping that if we have female veterans, they'll be, um, have a female mentor to work with, male veterans with a male uh, mentor, and we're also hoping to match up the branches of the service as well. Um, most of the courts that we've spoken to have said that the mentors are really the key component that makes veterans courts successful. Um, it's like this uh, woman here was saying about the paperwork, the mentors can actually help with the paperwork as well. We have a wonderful county veteran service officer here who, who really will help you with that. As she's, um, I don't know if, if you know that's the same in every county, but I think it is here. But you really do need the one-on-one, -on -one, and a mentor will do that. They can help them with that. They can be there with them in court. They're usually available by phone to have meetings with, just to say you can do this. You can get through veterans court. You can make it through treatment and be successful. Um, most veterans spend about a year to 18 months in veterans court. In addition to the treatment, they're meeting with their mentor. They're staying uh, free of alcohol and drugs. They're staying free of not having any more crimes. And um, hopefully just being a productive member of our community once again. Every veteran um, had that pride, that integrity. They worked together um, on a goal. And that's what we want to get those feelings back again. As I said, some veterans have just lost their way, wound up in the criminal justice system. Um, just as our last speaker said, putting them in jail, it doesn't really help. We want them to just get back to the way they were. So I think it's a program that will make our whole community safer. I think it will be wonderful for families, and it's wonderful for veterans. I'm trying to go around the county, as are other people that are part of the Veterans Court, just to let everyone know about this. Um, we want to make sure that all the defense attorneys know we already have the DA's office on board. Um, and we're really just uh, wanting people to know about it, to spread the word. Um, we have people that are asking when we're starting. So we do have veterans already waiting. We actually had a veteran in Washington County. I had a call saying that veteran would like to come here. Um, we weren't up and running yet. So we, we think that there's certainly a need. Uh, we think it'll be a, something very successful. If you are interested in being a mentor or you know people that are interested, um, please contact me. We haven't gotten the mentor program uh, quite up and running, but we do have a coordinator and we'll be starting that really shortly. So I know lunch is coming. I don't want to take up your time, but I'll be here for lunch. So if you have questions, please come and talk to me about it. It's something that I believe in very much. And as I said, I really think it's going to benefit our entire community. Um, just a little side note, um, it is something that there, there's a bill actually in the legislature here in Wisconsin stating that um, every county must be part of a veterans court, either have one in their own county or be part of a regional one. So we're kind of cutting edge here and um, ahead of the game because I believe that they are going, that it will be the one Wisconsin eventually and probably around the nation. And I think it's great that our courts are finally realizing that and, you know, as we heard Rodney speak about, veterans are coming back and we need to recognize there are reasons why this is happening and address it rather than just putting them in jail, which really helps no one. So just appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Thank you so much. I think the whole day seemed like a great idea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, just a couple quick things. On the back table, in the back here, there are some uh, pamphlets, uh, uh, oh, uniforms from the past that might be of interest to some of you. That's interesting, and please don't forget to get a federal book over here. And there are cards here for Charlene, our CVSO. 
she has sent along some of her business cards. She couldn't be with us today. Um, so please help yourself to those. And for lunch, you can sit wherever you want. The, your key thing is that little piece of paper you got when you came in, green or, or orange. They, that indicates which lunch you're having. So you would like to have that around you. Um, so, oh, so they could sit where they want. What else was I supposed to remember? You got your colored tags. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, get you the chance to another chance to get to in on the back auction. Okay, then um, we'd like to have a uh, veterans prayer before lunch, so we go ahead with that now, and then we'll be done talking. And our Lois Doyle will read this. won't be able to hear you otherwise. Oh, okay. I can hold it and you can read. Oh, okay. Dear Lord, today we honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect our country. We pray that you will bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service and the continual struggle to preserve our freedoms, our safety, our country's heritage for all of us. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, and for many of their different c contributions to America's victories our, over tyranny and oppression. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, and we are proud of them. And we pray that you will watch over these special people and bless them with peace and happiness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you.